Down at CERC, researchers are learning something new every day. Right now, they're exploring an invisible invasion that is taking place in forests. Invasive worms have been around for hundreds of years. It has been hypothesized that colonists brought earthworms to Jamestown and other early settlements. In those days, ships loaded extra material, such as soil and rocks, known as ballast, to balance out the weight of the cargo and to keep the ship afloat. When early colonists shipped tobacco to England, they carried worms like night crawlers and marsh worms in the ship's ballast. It wouldn't surprise me that particularly, you know, once gardening began over here, that um, the Europeans, particularly the British, who were very fond of that sort of stuff, wouldn't surprise me they brought earthworms over as a way to make the soil richer. Even today, earthworms, both invasive and native, are thought of as helpful organisms that churn and enrich soil and are commonly used in gardening. I think historically we, we thought they were all good because earthworms uh, churn up the soil, they aerate the soil, they mix it, they incorporate material on the surface of the soil into the soil. Uh, so I think they were given uh, a very positive uh, outlook in the past. But uh, in, in recent years, people have been looking at the ecological consequences and it turns out it may not be good. So, for example, it's been shown that earthworms, by uh, chewing up the soil, they basically are also altering the nature of the microbial community in the soil so that it favors bacteria over fungi. In our own research, we found that it potentially could have some negative effects on, on populations of nat native orchids and perhaps even the growth of some tree seed. Cirque's interest in worms began when scientists started to collaborate with researchers from Johns Hopkins University, conducting surveys of earthworms in forests at Cirque, and discovered that nearly all the earthworms at Cirque were non-native. Scientists then started to try to understand the consequences that invasive worms have on forests. Scientists at Cirque, Johns Hopkins University, and Purdue University are researching how earthworms affect soil fungal communities and the carbon that is stored in the soil. At CERC, scientists are studying how non-native earthworms impact fungi and bacteria in the soil. It was a big surprise to me being a plant ecologist and what the potential consequences of earthworms would be on, on plants. I think intuitively you understood that there could be some consequences, but what the details of that might be were completely unknown. So that's been really interesting to see see what what has happened and what we're beginning to learn about the impacts, direct and indirect, of earthworms in, in natural ecosystems. Research has shown that earthworms affect native plants in many ways. For example, some trees and orchids rely on a type of fungi called mycorrhizae, to grow and germinate. Earthworms also chew up the leaf litter that lies on forest floors. When there are a lot of earthworms in a certain area, the worms destroy healthy levels of leaf litter. This can have a significant effect, because leaf litter is important for replenishing nutrients in the soil. When the invasive earthworms eat the leaf litter, the minerals are never replaced. Earthworms consume the leaf litter on the surface of the soil, which creates a condition that allows for some invasive plants to grow and spread. I don't know of any, any government program or state program or county program where they're uh, uh, checking on what people have, or uh, I think it's more just a matter of education and trying to alert people to, to the possibilities of what the consequences of moving things around are. And it's not just earthworms, it's all kind of invasive species.